All right, let's go. And now for our weekly news segment. Right. All this techno music makes me want to get my raving sunglasses on and <laughs> get ready to party. Tony, live. Where are you at, Tony? I'm in Romania now. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so awesome. I'm back in Europe. And I haven't done a live in a long time, so I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks for doing this. So yeah, if you, yeah. you want to quickly, uh, let's run through the stories and we'll try to get uh, people if they want to chime in. If our guest wants to chime in, body wants to chime in, whoever else wants to jump up on stage to give their comments. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so the first, I kind of have it in segments. The first is CBDC and then the rest is kind of Monero. So, um, okay, let's talk about the World Economic Forum. They wrote an article which says the EU unveils plans for digital euro, promising complete and utter privacy, which is what they always say. And if we go on the article, they say, Move over crypto. Europe has moved one step closer to a digital euro. The European Commission has unveiled a legal framework that paves the way for the introduction of an electronic currency across the 20 member states that use the euro. How will the digital euro work? Uh, the European Central Bank is tasked with securing the nuts and bolts of the digital euro, which it says could complement cash and be launched as soon as 2027. Um, with the digital euro, people will be able to pay in public money. Uniquely, they will be able to pay both online and offline, which is very, um, very important. You're going to have a digital wallet. Um, again, online and offline payments, which is very important. It will be safe and secure, instant and convenient. Online and offline uh, offering more consumer choice alongside with private digital payment options such as cards and apps. Now, obviously, you're not going to have privacy. And uh, we had uh, articles in the past which they were basically saying that, yes, you're going to have privacy, but your identity is going to be linked to your wallet. And if you do anything that is against the law or what the ones uh, ruling us like, then uh, they can just go in your wallet and do whatever they want. So, and then I have three more articles and then we're going to discuss all, all of it at once. Um, the digital dollar, dollar project completes CBDC retail remittance pilot with Western Union. What's interesting is that in the US uh, from all the articles that I read, the US is the only country that every single time mentioned, oh, we're thinking about a digital dollar. It may come, maybe not. We're just playing with it. We're just trialing out. But of course, that eventually it's going to, to come. Uh, the project simulate, simulated transfers to customers of uh, BDO Unibank in the Philippines with improved settlement time, cost, and transparency. So it's faster, it's cheaper, and uh, with transparency so that the DDP, the Digital Dollar Project, announced the completion of a pilot study of remittance payments to the Philippines using a simulated retail central bank digital currency, RCBDC. And uh, most importantly, they said the pilot demonstrated that rather than displacing the service offerings of Western Union and BDO Unibank, CBDCs present an opportunity to modernize processes and uh, promote efficiencies for private sector companies and their uh, customers. And then uh, they went over costs and that they, in, um, I think, let's see where it is. In 2022, they had a total value of $626 billion of remittances. And a typical transaction is between $200 to $300. So CBDC is essentially going to be a lot faster and it's going to save a lot of money. And um, when they keep saying that, yeah, we may have a digital dollar or not, well, MIT is onto it as well. The MIT Digital Currency Initiative introduces at scale programmable CBDC platform. They have something we call the Parsec, short for Parallelized Architecture for Scalable Executing Smart Contracts. That's a mouthful as well. Uh, runs uh, the uh, on the ERC20 standard, so it could have other applications too. And uh, so what's really important is that the developers highlighted the platform speed it performed 118,000 ERC20 transactions per second on 128 hosts, exceeding public permissionless blockchains, uh, they said. So again, it's really, really fast. And uh, for a future form of payment, you want it to be fast, you want it to be cheap, which is something that we don't have today because every single time you make international uh, settlements is really expensive. And I went through it and I paid all the stupid fees and everything and you wait five days for it to, to settle. And they also said we focus on smart contracts because they provide the highest degree of expressivity and functionality to users. That's Windows update. Windows sucks. Use Linux. I gotta fix it. <laughs> um, programmability allows for asset backing and decentralization that is not possible under current CBDC designs. Developers should be taking advantage of the programmable opportunities that stable coins 
Coin assets offer rather than trying to compete with CBDCs. And then I have one more article, and then I'm going to go over it. Um, the CBDC section Bank of Russia reveals digital rubles logo and commission fees, which is huge because we had a lot of articles detailing the Russian CBDCs and their plans and everything. But from 2025, business to business transactions will cost $0.16 each, which is obviously very cheap, while individual customers will pay 0.3% of the total transaction sum when transferring to commercial accounts. Uh, the Russia, Russia CBDC project developed by the Bank of Russia has revealed its official logo. It's not the Monero one, <laughs> unfortunately, not ours. Uh, but That's it's interesting. Yeah, so this, yeah, this is really interesting, actually. Um, this is the logo of the Digital Rubble. If you're on Twitter, you may want to hop on YouTube uh, to see it, or you can go in the description and click on the link so you can see it uh, yourself. But a central bank has also published commission fee rates, which would exceed zero points only in 2025. Uh, what's interesting until the, the end of 2024 all service services will be free of charge but starting from 2025 business to business transactions will cost 15 rubles 0.16 dollars each and then what's also interesting is that um, according to bor uh, the regulator doesn't expect mass adoption of the digital rubble in russia before 2025 or even 2027 and citizens will not be forced to use the cbdc okay so pay attention to this uh, as it will operate along with cash and non-cash rubles, uh, BR Governor Elvira Nabulina recently specified. Uh, now, maybe it's going to be different in Russia, I'm not sure, but for sure for the digital euro, when they say that it's going to go along cash, no, <laughs> it's going to go along cash when sufficient amount of people will be on the CBDC, and then everybody's going to be on the CBDC and cash will be eradicated. But they're going to make CBDC so good and people are brainwashed that why would i use cash why would i use regular you know what we have now on, on cards why would I, why would i not use cbdc because it's faster it's uh, cheaper it's all this stuff they're gonna make it so much better that all everybody all the sheep are gonna go on cbdc's and then it's gonna be like a natural progression to cbdc and then boom not a lot of people people use cash what they might say is that oh well only, let's say, 10% of the population is using cash, so we just eradicate it, and we all use CBDCs, and everybody's happy, and then in six months, boom, <laughs> the real curtains get unveiled, and then, yeah. So now let's discuss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm honestly uh, waiting for the, the World Economic Forum to endorse WorldCoin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, sorry, before you uh, say anything, if you want to go to a specific article, uh, I can go to it if you want. Uh, anybody got any comments on these? Uh, Red Rothbard, Rothbard. Um, <clears throat> yeah, actually, after this, I'm going to my barber to get my hair cut, and he's got a wall full of uh, paper shit coins from countries around the world, like the um, Ethiopian currency, a bunch of worthless currencies, basically. And I'm going to give him a gold back to uh, tape on the wall alongside him, but. I think we just need to kind of focus on building relationships and um, people are a bit heck skeptical yeah. when you bring up, what's that? Oh, I just said, heck yeah, I love gold backs. Yeah, people are a bit skeptical when you bring up cryptocurrency because there's, we're just a wash in 25,000 shit coins. But gold backs <laughs> are a good conversation starter. And I think it they're pretty and, they're, and they, they gain trust and curiosity. And you can use gold backs to, as a, conversation starter to also introduce them to Monero. Mm -hmm. If you just kind of cold say cold sell some random coin, they're going to be kind of on guard. But if you show them that, I think they're very open to discussing like what's wrong with C you can introduce them to the concepts of CBDCs and monetary inflation. Um, and then once you kind of get that conversation rolling, you can say there's also a digital fungible money out there. It's pretty much the only fungible digital money. That's Monero. You can avoid mm -hmm. talking about darknet markets, but you can discuss the importance of avoiding non-fungible public ledger surveillance shit coins like Bitcoin um, and Ether, uh, Ethereum. Um, but that's pretty much what I'm going to do right after this show is go to my barber and start that conversation mm -hmm. with him. And if you have a local farmer's market, you just give them a gold back. And if you can convince them to accept gold backs weekly, you can eventually start getting them all on board with that and also be discussing Monero. But um, I think it's kind of wise to be hedged into a couple of different currencies because um, people are a little bit 
you know, skeptical of crypto in general um, for good reason. We, again, we're awash and anyone can serve the, the cryptocurrency, but I think it builds trust. It's a good strategy. I'm, that's another adoption strategy I'm going to be testing out here locally. Um, I think face-to-face, -face, um, you know, relationships are going to be important in the future, especially with AI and bots. Uh, we need to build high trust societies, even if they're nestled within big urban centers, as opposed to the uh, low trust modern world we have. Um, so that's my take on it. That's one of the other strategies I'm implementing. So I would encourage everyone to go out, just talk to your local barber, whoever, these cash businesses, taco trucks, and maybe start a conversation with a gold back just so they want to talk to you. Yeah, plus it's tangible, right? Like I, I mean, which I think you kind of, kind of alluded to. So you, you take a gold back out and you show it to somebody. They're like, "Oh wow, what, what is that?" Uh, as opposed to trying to explain Monero, which is just you know digits on a screen. Um, very good points. It's a, it's a it's a good conversation starter. And the wait, waking people up to the the fact that cash is being eliminated. Hmm. I hope my audio is all right, but I just thought I'd throw it out there. I know I've said this before, but one of the best ways to battle the CBDC onslaught is to use normalcy bias against the, the powers that shouldn't be. You just point out that, especially if like the BRICS decides to back it with some kind of you know substantial whatever, whether it be just imaginary paper gold or whatever they're going to do, you just remind them that uh, all throughout history, a currency comes along promising to be redeemable in whatever. And then the power of the printing press always wins. It always draws them into the dark side. Now, people like us tend to believe that that was the plan all along. Um, but when you can demonstrate the, 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 I guess you could say the printing cycle in the mind of the normie, that Monero's is going to be fixed and easy to predict. Or when you hand somebody a gold back, it gives them the opportunity to recognize that th nobody can take the gold out of their gold back. And it's actually a really easy thing to explain to somebody when you tell them, you know, the more dollars there are, the less they're worth. The more CBDCs there are, the less that they're worth. Um, so it, 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 when you're fighting that conversation, oh, it's inevitable. Oh, it's never going to change. Just remind them that all of the previous inevitable, never going to change fiat Fed notes or whatever, the version of the world currency of the day, they're all in the dustbin of history, but the gold and the gold back is going to last forever. Um, and that the blockchain that Monero sports is built with, uh, with the long haul in mind, it has resolved a lot of these historical issues. It has a, a mechanism for its survival built right into the code. Yeah, and you, you've had a guest on in the past who discussed those. Uh, I think the Romanian. Um, they were they're like in in the old Soviet Union that maybe it was Romania where they had local uh, people who would exchange currency and sort of be like the local black market, gray market um, representatives. If you go to these farmers markets or barbers or taco trucks or whatever, establish these relationships, you can say, if you ever want to cash these out, I can be your local guy to, you know, cash you out into fiat, or I can exchange your gold backs for Monero or vice versa. So you, you can kind of establish that local, uh, you can be that local I don't want to use the word money changer, but <laughs> um, essentially ATM, um, which actually I have a pretty interesting update for, for Havino, um, the Havino Dex, and a couple of other, other uh, Monero relevant uh, floss projects if we get to it. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll have Havino on here soon. Uh, well, they just had they just did a beta release, which is really interesting for anyone who's yes. interested. So. Yeah, yeah, they presented at Monerotopia, and yeah, I think they they just released, right? Uh, oh, did they really? I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I see. also wanted them to include gold and silver as an accepted local currency, 
So we've got local Monero that you can um, find local dealers to accept uh, fiat, your local currency for Monero, and meet up at a coffee shop or whatever. And There's Havina, some guy up in Alaska who will switch gold backs in Monero and fiat. I mean, who knows? I, I, I've heard there's some guy out there that does that, if anybody is wondering. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I kind of lobbied the... Uh, I, I follow a lot of Floss projects uh, closely. I'm not technical, but I follow developments pretty as closely as I can. Um, I kind of lobbied to have them add gold and silver to Havino, and they did. Now I'm trying to get them to add... Uh, gold backs but i i lobbied to have it happen and then i donated monero to the guy who added it uh, for us but um that's going to be really great because when local monero since it's kind of centralized becomes endangered we've got this dex that also has this local option that you can show up pay cash gold silver gold backs or check to cash in and out of monero so that's that's going to be huge also definitely, definitely. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get Havino on. I actually uh, I was hanging out with them not too not too long ago. Uh, some some of the people behind the behind the project. Uh, I see Dan. Dan, what's going on, man? Do you uh, do you want to throw something out there? With yeah, regards to- I, I, I love that uh, you guys are talking about this paper currency because check this shit out. You know, you know what this is, right? Those are, those are the Tumans. Those are tumens, yeah. <laughs> and, you can explain uh, to people what those are. Not 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 two mens, but two mens, right? Two men, T U M I N. It is the indigenous not word associated for, with this at all. Right, indigenous word for money in uh, Mexico, South America, and around the time that Bitcoin started, there was this started in Mexico out of a university. So it is a local currency in Mexico, and they are not a friend of the Bank of Mexico. Uh, They have been sued by them. They used indigenous rights from the Mexican Constitution, which allowed them to win. So they are still going. And we built them a blockchain, which is a Zcash fork that uses RandomX. And it's it's not meant for, you know, exchanges or any of that. It's just for them to transact. They they currently have 1.3 million, probably a little bit more, in circulation of this paper. And it's in six different regions in Mexico. So uh, you guys were talking about, you know, different regions of taking Monero and things like that. And uh, when I heard them, I'm like, yeah, shit, that's, that's what they're doing in Mexico. But, so we don't get anything out of this. And it's not like something you can just go and get unless you want to be part of the economy. So, it, you know, I'm it's, it's really exciting to me to, to be part of it. To meet these people, like, you know, I went down there and they're, you know, everybody talks about being anarchists. These would be the actual anarchists. Your, your, mic, your mic just uh, got really bad. We were hearing it before, but it just got bad. Sorry, yeah, a little bit of wind. Uh, yeah, man, uh, they're not—they're uh, not pretend anarchists. They—they're <laughs> they're living, living it. They're living uh, it. Yeah, man. So I'm uh, proud to be part of that and uh, see where this goes. And yeah. Good, so. Oh, by the way, you got this shit right here nice. at a Bitcoin meetup. Uh, you can buy it for Monero, Pirates, various other privacy coins, and cash uh, at the. Austin Bitcoin meetup. <laughs> oh, get out of here. Huh? Wow. All right. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah. good. It's spreading. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> and it's uh, damn good coffee. <laughs> so. Oh, awesome, man. Glad you like it. Oh, oh, always good to see you. Thanks for jumping on today. Let's uh, yeah, please, please, please stay along for the ride and we'll, yeah. we'll continue with these new stories because we got more. Uh, Tony, yes. you want to keep moving? Yeah, I was going to say one more story. So I took an Uber yesterday and then the guy worked with the Romanian military intelligence. And he, he just started to talk about CBDCs and we talked about CBDCs for the entire ride. I didn't even mention CBDCs. And he was like in his 60s. So it's so pleasant to see that uh, like older people as himself know and are, are aware of CBDCs. And he said that CBDCs, when they're going to come, it's not going to be a pleasant thing. So 
I wanted to mention that too. So oh, that that is interesting. Yeah, that, that's is kind of what we're saying, right? Like World Coin, CBDCs. As bad as these things are, the silver lining is is it's opening people's eyes. For sure. Um, then we're gonna talk about this real quick. But we talked about it before. Um, how are you? Off Twitter, uh, Chicago Wallet, off Twitter as well. You can still use Chicago Wallet, which is a business wallet, and you take control of your business uh, payments in crypto. Uh, but they are not on Twitter anymore. Uh, I'm not sure why uh, they got deplatformed. I mean, we have theories, but we don't uh, know exactly why. Uh, um, breaking news, by the way. Uh, Howard did respond to us, he emailed us. <laughs> um yeah so yeah he was uh i've attached their no uh, he was perma banned for violating twitter rules he's i don't think he's ex really sure exactly why they're never gonna tell you um, like exactly what it was <laughs> yeah he commented on some post and like they banned him and now he's been working with them to try to get back on but he's like i give up total bs but they rejected my appeal so whatever i'm done can find me on mastodon Anyway, oh, so wow. I, think, I think you won't you won't be seeing Howard on Twitter <laughs> just because he doesn't want to deal with the BS and why why should he have to? Someone told me he's also on Noster, but I don't I don't know if that's true. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if he is, but he's definitely on Mastodon. What Noster client do you uh, you guys use? If any of you are Noster users, I don't have any. I'm not on. Uh, I've experimented with it. I don't even know what client I was using. Snort that social. That one's pretty uh, friendly. Um, and then there's another one that I was trying out. Iris.to. Uh, those two, I think, are the um, the nicest ones I've seen so yeah. far. I think I might have used that one. Uh, let's keep going, though. Tony, yes. keep, keep moving along. Yes. Uh, quick mention. Uh, so now in Cake Wallet, you're going to have background sync, which is very cool. So basically... My phone is not on and your wallet is uh, syncing. And I'm not sure how much battery that uses. I hope that it's not gonna use a lot of battery. And if it doesn't, then that's a really good feature. Then on the new update from uh, Cape Wallet, you can now, it now supports ETH and all ERC20 tokens, including USDT, USDC, and DAI. Add, you can add custom ERC20 tokens, add custom Ethereum node, privacy setting to disable e, e scam API if desired, send to multiple recipients, restores, are compatible with other popular Ethereum wallets. You can easily convert to and from other assets, including Monero, Bitcoin, and Litecoin. So um, it's huge. It's a really huge update. Um, and they're going to- Yeah, the, the background and... scan is something people have been asking for for a long time. And my, yeah, my understanding is it's going to work on Android and on iOS as well. Uh, so that, that's that's big. Any any comments there? Anybody want to throw out any comments with regards to that? Cake news. Yeah, it's uh, got um a couple different modes. It's got an aggressive mode and then an unobtrusive mode. And I'm testing them both out right now uh, oh, to wow. see like how the battery life will be on like a graphene OS Pixel device. Um, but it's super awesome being able to just open Cake Wall and immediately it's just it's synced. It's all done. It's, it's ready tremendous. to go. It's super cool. This That's is true. one of the reasons why Get Graphene picked Monero.com wallet specifically, but you know, a cake wallet function is because it's my firmly held belief that they really do walk that line between staying on the cutting edge of you know the the latest and greatest of the technology, but being super user friendly, having an intuitive interface. I mean, they, I mean, they just bat it out of the park again right that's what they do over there yeah good stuff and so and then they're adding these erc right the ability to hold to hold eth and uh, st well, i guess the first time you can hold the stable coin on on cake wallet right there was really no other stable coin solution so that that's that's kind of big monero you can hold monero the stable <laughs> coin <laughs> that's right <laughs> the stablest of all coins um all right yeah let's keep moving tony go ahead yes so now for the next thing so augustine he's 18 years old he's from argentina and so the beautiful thing about monero is that you don't need to know how it works in depth he doesn't know about the mathematics of monero or whether it has even a uh, tail emission he doesn't know that but the only thing that he does know is how to use it 
So in this video, he's using Monero, he's sending Monero, and the message is that XMR is simple uh, to use and important. That's very important because like in Bitcoin, if you take someone that is not very technolo technologically sound, you need to, and they want privacy, it's very complicated. But in, in Monero, if they have Monero, you just tell them how much you want to send, what address, send, and you're done. So, which is really important for electronic cash as well. Um, and then we have uh, talking about Libertad de Cal. Uh, so there's a group of 50 kids that play soccer next to the train station, sometimes competing against kids from other neighborhoods. Andrea said they're all between four and 12 years old, usually playing against each other according to size. But here's what I've noticed, he said. The jersey is orange and black, very XMR. <laughs> Uh, but only a couple of them had jerseys because it's been a couple of years since the last time they ordered some, and so they either use similar T-shirts or colored clothes to identify themselves. As the coach, and he told me with about 1.5 XMR, they could make jerseys for all, all of them. My guess is not, ev not every family can uh, slash agrees to pay for special jerseys. With probably around 1 XMR, we can already help families pay less for the jerseys and have Monero as a sponsor printer in them. And with 1.5 XMR, we could probably give them all for free. So Amazing. yeah, to be, to be clear, this is different than what we've seen going on in Argentina. Uh, the other kid that we had on the show, which Andreas was um, interpreting for, yes, uh, Andreas on his own now, where he lives, he lives in a different part of Argentina. He lives in, uh, I believe, like near Buenos Aires. Um, he saw these kids playing soccer, right, and now he's reaching out to help them to get them going with jerseys. Is that is that what's going on here? Holy crap. And he said, okay, first update. I woke up to 10 donations for a total of 1.3 XMR. Oh, wow. We showed it to my son, who's now my official sidekick for this project, and his eyes were big as plates. I got to <laughs> in one hour or so because they play on Saturday mornings and report back. Okay, live from the site. Three hours ago, these are from these are some of our players waiting for their turn. This group is around 10 year old. Today they're playing against another soccer school. See the orange jerseys? Only three of them still have one from the old batch so it looks like uh wow oh wow fundraiser update we're at 1.8 monero it's like hashtag oh my god <laughs> it's so good luck, good luck keeping them, up like, with the a narrow theme jerseys essentially i guess so yeah i guess so. awesome uh, yeah andreas if you if you want to jump up real quick and and give us uh let us know what's going on there i think i saw you in the comments I don't Anybody, know if uh, you noticed, but uh, Uber Blue's biggest problem with his news segment is trying to keep up with the generosity of Monero. Nobody can ever keep yeah. up with the story because by the time you're reporting on the story, the the funding goals have been met and exceeded pretty much. Like just just like the last Monero talk that we did a a, a round of funding, it took no time at all for everything to be paid off in full. It's always like that. It's funny. For example, I will report on something one week and the next week, hey guys, just letting you know that he was fully funded and like in one day or something. Yeah, it's it was literally like a day. Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. But this is great. It's fun. It's Beautiful great. to see. Argentina is really becoming the, the hot zone, man. Uh, let's just keep on that before we move yeah, on. yeah, of course. Of course. Please do. Um, that's amazing. And uh, one thing that might be an opportunity here is um, I've been very big on trying to get us to be thinking about adoption in Nigeria. If this so soccer's football's uh, popular all over the world, and I'm sure in Nigeria it is. And for those who don't know, Nigeria alone has 41% of all crypto in Africa. Um, I've been networking and reaching out to people who speak uh, Hausa and Yoruba, which are the two dominant languages there. And they're international trade languages in with some of the top international trade languages in Africa. So I'm trying to, for a while, I was trying to find someone who would translate the documentation for the Monero website. And, and uh, I saw Cake Wallet jumped on translating when uh, I suggested that they um, pro provide Hausa and Yoruba um, <clears throat> language support. But um, that could be franchised in Nigeria. And that same exact model might get a real explosive foothold and that same betting platform. Um, I mean, they took the initiative and have local merchants accepting Monero before any of us even knew it was happening. So this, this could be something to seed in uh, Nigeria as well. Amazing. And like, like you said, yeah, there's really nothing more global than, than soccer. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, yeah. so universal. 
And this is one. this is one of those things, the soccer thing, though. It's another example of Monero turning the general tyranny marketing thing on its head. You know, like, how do people get you to degenerate your entire family lineage? Well, it's a bunch of, like, alcohol advertisements and, like, mortgage refinance advertisements. And then all of a sudden people go to their kid's soccer practice and it's a bunch of, like, paid for with the generous donations of the XMR community. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Which is uh, uh, yeah, I think Andreas wants to jump on real quick. Let's see, I just sent him the link. We'll see if he pops on and then you can bring him up. Okay. Uh, from the Libertad Soccer Football Club wants to reach out to me to uh, get connected with the contacts I've established in Nigeria to help them get their betting platform going locally. Please, please do. That would be amazing. And one more thing before uh, he jumps on, because this is one more thing from him. Uh, so this is an image. There's a lot of people waiting in line. And essentially, people doing lines outside the supermarket in Argentina to get their eyes scanned for either an illiquid coin that will go to zero or willingly entering a dystopian world identity. Future social scoring scheme is pretty sad, to be honest, he says. Uh, so if he helps on the school, because then he can talk about this. And then also... wait, wait, scroll, scroll down. Go, go back to that tweet he put out and scroll down for a sec to mm -hmm. some of the... I had responded, we need to uh, have Monero people out there. And then I saw somebody say, like, I'm on it. Wait, go down. Uh, um, is it in the replies? or? Yeah, maybe in the reply to that. Oh, we're yeah. on it. We're on it. So I don't, I don't know what that says in Spanish. Maybe Andreas can tell us. But it looks like somebody actually is trying to warn people about WorldCoin. Cryptocurrency and blockchain. Oh, wow. OK, so basically, uh, it says, nada de eso. None of the identific biometric identifications are necessary to use uh, cryptocurrencies. Maybe that's the same for instance. Essentially, they're discussing WorldCoin and they're uh, telling people how for cryptocurrency, you don't need to do all this stuff. Essentially, you don't need to scan your iris, you don't need to scan your face and all this stuff to use crypto. That's what it's basically saying. That's great. Yeah. I wonder if they're like actually somebody's out going out there handing them out. That would be that'd be great. 